Good evening. Oh, we're working tonight. All right. I tell you, I like you guys so much. I'm, I'm just going to mark 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock on my card. I'll be back for both. Like radio, give me both. Uh, I, I think, I feel a lot like I imagine Paul would have felt uh, when he was coming back. Yeah, Acts chapter 14, Paul and Barnabas, they go Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 14. You get to the very end of Acts chapter 14, and what does it say? They came back to Antioch where they'd been sent out, and they told them all that God had done with them. And then you keep on reading, you go to Acts chapter 15 and verse 3, and it said they, they traveled down through Samaria and Phoenicia telling all that God had done. And then you go to Acts chapter 15 and verse 4, and they went to Jerusalem and they told the brethren all that God had done with them. They got back from their mission trip and they couldn't stop telling all the brethren. You've got to hear about what God did with us, what God is doing with his people, what he's doing with his church. You've got to hear this. It, it was too good a news not to share. It was too good a news to, to hoard it and keep it in because really it's, it's not just the campaigner's news. It wasn't just Paul and Barnabas' news. It was the church's news. It, it was the news of what God was doing in this world. And so I really appreciate each and every person here this evening. Uh, this church is doing a great work in Belize, and I do mean this church, all of us. And I can't wait to tell you what we saw God doing with us here in Belize. It's quite an experience when you see God at work changing people's lives. And, you know, when you come back and, and you hear the numbers, you know, so many were baptized, so many were restored. Don't, don't get so caught up in it was such and such a number. That was people's lives that changed. For each and every one of them, it was everything. It was their whole life. From eternal condemnation to eternal paradise. And, and it's amazing. And it's amazing when you get to see it firsthand. And, and we saw a lot of God's mighty works uh, this this year uh, I think if I live to preach 50 more Belize campaigns I'm not sure I'll ever see a year quite like 2016 I mean what where do you start what what do you start by saying that there's so much uh, here brother Jerry had a, a saying he said if you'll attempt great things for God you can expect great help from God and I think that is certainly true I think there's another idea that goes hand in hand with this one, and that is if you attempt great things for God, you can expect great opposition from Satan. Uh, he doesn't like it. When he has a hold on a people, when he, when he has things the way that he likes it, and you start stepping in trying to do things for God, well, you can expect some opposition. And I think this year we saw a good bit of both. We saw some great things being attempted for God in this effort, and we saw some opposition from Satan. And... and uh, that's that's kind of why I wanted to start with this idea here in Ephesians chapter 6. We have to remind ourselves constantly that we are up against a real spiritual enemy. That, that he is active. God is active. Satan's active as well. And he's trying to prevent what God is trying to do in this world. And, and so it almost just made it that much better. Because not only did we set out to do these things for God and we saw how God came through and how he blessed those efforts... God prevailed in spite of great opposition this year. He made a mockery of what Satan tried to do in coming up against this effort. And I just can't wait to get into details and share it with you. I, I want to say this, that I, I don't know that we could ever put a, a finger on and say, I know the details of exactly what God is doing and Satan is doing. And, and we had this opposition, so I know that's of Satan. Well, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's just life. Uh, sometimes it's of God. Sometimes it's of Satan, but... I think you'll see as we go through it, uh, the opposition that stacked up against us was certainly uh, to be noted. Uh, a couple of the, the things that we were attempting for God this year, it, it's a, a great thing in and of itself to go down and to share the gospel. There were, there were some extras this year. We were trying to do a couple of things that we hadn't done in a while. Number one, we were going back to Belize City. Melvin Davis uh, is one of the more conscientious people you will ever meet a meek spirit, a very kind and sweet soul. And uh, several years ago, uh, as the crime was starting to uptick a little bit in his city, uh, he expressed some fears about our safety. And so I think it had been 13 years since we'd been in Belize City. That's, that's what I heard from somebody uh, that had been on the last Belize City campaign. And it wasn't that we wanted the, the work to cease there. Brother Melvin was still hard at work. Um, but he didn't want to put us in harm's way. And so we hadn't been there in a while. 
But this year we, we talked about it. We talked to Brother Melvin about it, and we decided we needed to go back. We really did. It had been too long. Uh, when we went for the funeral this past April, uh, several of the members there said, we thought you forgot about us. And, and that stung a little bit uh, because we didn't forget about them. We love them. Uh, we love our brother Melvin and, and every member there. But we knew that we'd be, made the right decision to go back because we needed to be there. We needed to be working with our brethren there. So, but that was one notable thing that we wanted to do this year that we hadn't done in a while. We want to go back to Belize City. Uh, might not... Uh, be out after dark if we could help it. Uh, might not spend so much time walking the streets if we could help it, but we wanted to work somehow, some way there. Number two, uh, we wanted to have a vacation Bible school. Uh, there's a preschool that is operated outside of the uh, Belize or out of the Belize City congregation building there, uh, and Sister Myrna was a big part of that. And when she passed, there was a, a conversation, how, how are we going to keep this going? But they decided we are going to keep this going. And they've got a lot of contacts, a lot of uh, young families, a lot of children there. Uh, and, and what a way to reach families through a vacation Bible school. Uh, we came to find out that we had it wrong. We thought they had not ever had a vacation Bible school there before. Some of us did. Uh, some of us, when we came to find out differently, said, of course they've had vacation Bible schools there before. But we thought we were trying something very new. Uh, it turned out that they have them quite often, but uh, we wanted to do that. We wanted to make that part of the campaign effort. I realize that that's a big reach uh, when you come down there and you don't have much time to work with, to start with, uh, to carve out one to four each weekday. That's a lot of time dedicated, uh, but it was real important. We wanted to do that. Thirdly, uh, we wanted to have an evangelism workshop. Uh, we love to go down and to have Bible studies with anybody that will study the Bible and to convert anybody that will come to Jesus Christ. But you know what? At the end of the day, that is really the work of the local church. That is really the work of those brethren that are there at all times, spreading the gospel in their location. And more of our role is to support them in that. And so they're just like us. I, in, in America, Alabama, and Belize, no matter where you are, I think most Christians feel a, a anxiousness, a, a fear, I know that's something I need to be doing, but I don't know how. Uh, show me how to sit down and conduct a Bible study. And so that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to put on a class each night and teach them how to teach others the gospel. And so that's another hour dedicated each day. And, and so we, we were really reaching. We were really trying to add to what we were doing in Belize this year. We were attempting great things for God. And we ran into great opposition uh, again, I don't pretend to know all the details of what is from Satan, what is just life, but let me just go through some of the opposition and the challenges that we ran into when we went down this year. Number one is what I, I guess we could just call the Gideon effect. You know, when Gideon says, I'm going to go with this amount of people, and God said, no, you're not, and we need to whittle that down. Well, our campaign group got whittled down a good bit as we were preparing to go down to Belize. Uh, we had, uh, well, they're sitting right here together, they're, they're, Partners in Crime, Deborah and Mona, ran out and, and tore their knees up and, and couldn't go with us back in March uh, when they'd planned to. And, and uh, uh, I count six, and I'm, I'm just depending on my faulty memory. There might have been even more than six, but I, I feel like I'm forgetting one. But I know there were six. Uh, Roy and Susan Hayes were planning to go with us back in April, and Brother Roy got an infection in his leg, and he couldn't go. Uh, Kenny and Pam were planning to go with us, and, and Kenny... I had to have brain surgery. And, and so all these things were whittling down our campaign group one after another. And, and when you go with the size of a group that we go with, six people is a lot of people. And, and when we're going to do a vacation Bible school and we're thinking, well, there might be 100 kids there plus, we don't know. We need all the help that we can get. And, and so it, it, was a, it was a big challenge. It was a big opposition that came up against us when our campaign group kept dwindling one after another. Uh, and we're sorry, to, uh, Sister Deborah still couldn't go with us here in July. Uh, she lost a very close, beloved uncle, and, and we hate that for her. But uh, we had several that just couldn't go, that really wanted to go, uh, but they just couldn't. Uh, beyond that, uh, and, and, and pretty, uh, uh, pretty large opposition, we lost our sister Myrna. Uh, Myrna Davis, Melvin's wife, uh, she had a, a stroke and that she was... Uh, incapacitated for a couple of maybe a week or two leading up to our campaign in April and then she passed the week that we were supposed to go down and we talked about it we talked with brother Melvin about it we uh, we didn't want to just 
drop that work. Uh, and if Melvin wanted to go forward with it, we would have gone forward with it, but we wanted to be honoring, and we didn't want to push anything on that congregation at a time that they didn't need. And so we decided, you know what, it's best to postpone. And so we didn't go in April in the way that we thought that we would go. Uh, again, Sister Myrna was instrumental in, in the school that they had going on there. Uh, she was instrumental in many different ministries at that location, and, and her loss is, is very much missed. Uh, she was Melvin's right-hand woman, and, and, and he's still going through a transition in his life. Uh, it really rocked that congregation, and it was so good. Uh, they just really appreciated that we still uh, sent a contingent back in April uh, to be there for that funeral. Uh, but that was another challenge that came up against us. Uh, number three, uh, Hurricane Earl. Uh, I mean, that was a big, it really was a big one. Uh, there was no injury or loss of life uh, in the church or in our campaign group. Uh, one gentleman uh, in the country had a heart attack. Another lady had a, a structure fell on her. There was two fatalities. Uh, but our mission effort wasn't affected in that way. But what happened was we, lo we lost Wednesday. And that's a big day to lose. Uh, you know, when you go down there, we've got a four-lesson series that we go through in, in teaching people the Bible. And it's 30 minutes each, and it's, uh, it's really something you don't want to fly through. Uh, you sit down and you study for an hour, hour and a half solid. People's eyes get big, and they're drinking water from a fire hose. Need to break it up. Do four lessons, 30 minutes each. And so when you get down there on Saturday or Sunday, you've got four, maybe five days total. Wednesday, you're closing out studies. Uh, you're hoping to see souls come to Christ on Wednesday. And Hurricane Earl came through, and, and we couldn't do what we normally do on Wednesday. And that hurt us. And there's still some studies right now that are left open-ended, and, and we gave those contacts to Melvin and to the church, and, and they'll follow up on those. But you, when you build rapport with a person and you go through the study all the way to the end and then you have to drop it, it hurts. And so we had a lot of opposition, a lot of challenges that came up against our campaign efforts uh, this year. So we, we were attempting several great things for God, and, and we were coming up with against several great oppositions. But it, again, it just made it that much more amazing when God came through. It made it that much more amazing when God's people came through. Realize God works through his people in this world, and you've got to allow yourself to be used in order for God to use you. And so I never have seen anyone stand quite as tall as when we went down in April and Melvin preached his wife's funeral beautifully the gospel was presented in such strength and and we've already said this in times past and we reiterate, reiterate it today that somebody came to the gospel and obeyed the gospel because of that funeral uh brother gary boy he just <laughs> oh we're gonna do this no you're not okay change the plane tickets we're gonna do this no you're not go go back and change them brother gary had his hands full with this campaign he was really a uh just just I invaluable to the campaign so many people you saw their best on this campaign because of what we were dealing with and rolling with the punches and god came through and god's people came through this year i, I know we've already had a report on our april efforts i don't want to repeat that information too much uh, but i do just want to remind you that that was a part of this year's campaign and, and so what happened back in april well we flew down, we stepped right off the plane onto a van and drove straight to Sister Myrna's funeral. And we were there with the church, went to the graveside, and we were there with them. It was a powerful funeral. The gospel was presented in such a powerful way at that funeral that one man came up after the casket had been wheeled out and he said, that is what I need. I need what you guys are talking about there. And so we studied with him and he was baptized. Uh, this is uh, Brother Gabriel right here. Uh, I want you to pray for Brother Gabriel. Brother Gabriel's in a, in a bad situation. His wife is separated from him. She's in the States. He's in Belize. And, and for various reasons, that's the case. He's got a lot of temptations. He's got a big drinking problem. And, and, and he came to Christ. He said, I'm going to lay that down, and he was baptized. He's still struggling with it right now, though. Please pray for Brother Gabriel. He wants to do what's right. He knows that this is what he needs in his life. And he was converted on that April campaign we call it the camp the not a campaign campaign it wasn't a campaign but it was a campaign and he was converted on that occasion brenda tillett uh, she came forward sunday morning likewise saying that this is what i need and, and we sat down with her probably 15 20 more minutes and she decided i want to be baptized and so brenda tillett was baptized on that sunday uh, she she doesn't look a lot 
older than me. She's probably about my age. Uh, she doesn't look in too poor of condition there, but she told us she had cancer and that she was going to be undergoing treatments. And we certainly prayed for that, and, and we studied with her and baptized her. Really didn't think it was that bad off. Uh, she died in May. Uh, she was baptized, became a Christian in April, and you never know when it's your time to go. And our sister Brenda is now in heaven because of this campaign effort. That's Sister Brenda Tillett there. Uh, we, we would have liked to have come back a little bit sooner uh, when we went down in April because uh, when we changed our plans, we decided, well, we're not campaigning, but we're going to be with Brother Melvin with the church, be there for the funeral, and, and pay our respects and, and show our love. But there's no need for us to stay all the way through the next Friday. Uh, but when you talk to the airline about that, you think, well, maybe we should stay through the next Friday. It's kind of costly to change that up, and so we did. And while we were there, we, we ought to do Bible studies. I mean, we can't just be here and hang around and do nothing. We did some Bible studies. Brother Scott Crawford studied with this young man, and he was likewise baptized into Jesus Christ. Three precious souls came to Christ this past April because of the Not a Campaign campaign. Now, transitioning off of that campaign into last week, there was a certain young man that we studied with in April uh, who went by the name Waxy. Uh, if you really pushed him, uh, he would tell you his name was Brandon, uh, but he's, he really preferred Waxy. Uh, as a child, Waxy uh, got into a, a fire. I, I believe it was, um, they thought it was kerosene, but it turned out to be gasoline. And uh, it blew up on him and really burned him real bad. And they said that his skin just kind of melted back, and, and the kids told him, you look Waxy. And it just stuck. I, I don't know. He liked that nickname, though. He stuck with it, and his name was Waxy. Uh, Waxy, I think, lived around the corner from Melvin and Myrna, and through certain odd jobs, both at Melvin's house and at the uh, congregation building there, uh, Sister Myrna got to working on Waxy. And she got to, to encourage you, you ought to come to our worship services with us. Uh, he'd had several different religious experiences in the past, and uh, he'd committed his life uh, to, to Christ through a denomination before, and the more he studied, the more he came uh, upset with what he'd been taught. And he was really gun-shy to make another commitment. And we studied with him, me and Tim, uh, back in April. Went through all four lessons. We pled with him and pled with him. And he said, I know this is something that I need to do, but it's not right now. Not, not right now. And that, that hurts. Because a lot of people will tell you, I know I need to do this, but I'm going to get something, and then I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And they never do it. You read about Felix and Festus and Agrippa uh, that Paul studied with there in, in Acts, and they said, Agrippa said, almost. We never know that he did. And a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to, and, and then they don't. And, and when we studied with Wax, and we pled with him, and he decided, I, I'm just not going to right now, that hurt. But then when we came back uh, this past week, Saturday morning, first thing when we come up to the church building, who's there? Waxy. It's been working on Waxy for four months now. He knows what he needs to do. I don't know why he's been waiting. I know, don't know why he hadn't already made that decision. It's been working on him, but he hadn't made the decision yet. And Kenny and Pam uh, sat down with him for a while, just kind of reviewed uh, what he'd studied before. He already knew what he needed to do. He knew he needed to be baptized. And, and this is uh, Brother Waxy here. Uh, somebody said, well, now we can start calling you Brother Brandon. He said... How about Brother Waxy? He's Brother Waxy. Uh, you'll notice we've switched from the sea uh, to a, a baptismal here. Um, what they've got there is a, a baptistry behind a curtain back where they have the preschool. And they don't keep water in it during the school season because the kids will get into it. And when we had the vacation Bible school, I can attest those kids were trying to get into that baptistry the whole time. And so uh, now that school was out this summer, they decided to fill it up is a whole lot more convenient, uh, and that's, that's in the back of the church there. This is Brother Waxy with Kenny. Now, I, I just want to think about this for a second, because 1 Corinthians comes to mind. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 6, Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Think about all of the Christians' hands that touched this young man. Or from that godly woman that kept on after him, who's now gone. She's, she's passed from this earth, but her influence was still working on this young man. 
to her husband, the preacher. To, I, I have no idea how many other members of that congregation were likewise working on him. And then me and Brother Tim sit down and we study with him. And, and he wasn't converted and yet we planted the seed. And then we come back around and Kenny and Pam, they studied with him. And now he's been converted, he's come to Jesus Christ, and he's going to grow in this congregation with so many other Christian influences. Isn't it just wonderful how God works through his people? How alone, just by ourselves, yeah, we have an impact, but, but it's so diminished in, 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 in respect to what it is when we're together. And when God is using us here and there just as he chooses. Brother Waxy. That was Saturday morning. Sunday morning, we had a big full day planned. Uh, we were going to have worship in the morning, of course. We were going to go down to the, the Chinese restaurant where you get the best fried chicken you ever had. And we're going to buy, buy a whole bunch and bring it back. And we're going to have a fellowship meal. And, and some of the ladies also likewise uh, cooked. And we had a big fellowship meal there. And then we we're going to have uh, a little bit of a break, do some Bible studies during the afternoon hours, come back, have worship again. Big day. Well, uh, sister, now sister, uh, Yvonne, and I should have bolded these names so I can find them quick. Yvonne August. Yvonne August was there that morning. Now, Saturday, uh, they set up studies beforehand. So as soon as we get there, uh, this person is a prospect. Uh, this, this is a name that's been given in. Who wants this name? And then they hand out all the names of certain prospects uh, that we can study the Bible with on Saturday morning. Yvonne's name had been passed out on that Saturday morning. And, and so we uh, had been looking for that day. But on Sunday morning, she shows up at worship. And Melvin's looking around, saying, who has Yvonne's card? Who has Yvonne's card? And we couldn't find it. And, and Brother Kenny and Sister Pam, they said, well, we'll take Yvonne. We'll go study with her. And so right after that, uh, that fellowship meal, during that time, they took Yvonne to the side. Uh, and they studied with her for a while. And she decided likewise that she wanted to put on Christ in baptism. There's that baptistry from the front side there, uh, looking forward from the curtain. Sister Yvonne August there. Uh, she's a middle-aged working mother. I uh, got a five-year-old son. Uh, her sister attends the Ladyville congregation about 20 minutes drive uh, back up the road, and she's our sister now. Uh, I don't have a picture for this next one, but Sandra Dean Trapp. Uh, this is a lady that Mona and Mom and Dad uh, had the, st uh, the privilege of studying with. Uh, she'd been baptized before. She was a Christian. Uh, Brother Melvin had baptized her uh, quite a time ago, but, but she had fallen away from the church, and she had not been uh, doing as she ought to and following Christ as, as closely as we ought. We need to, to understand and we need to stress the point uh, that when somebody is restored, they have just as much come back to Christ uh, as those who were baptized. They were just as lost. The prodigal son, uh, when, it, uh, when he returns, his father, he, he kills the fatted calf and he throws a feast. My son was lost, but now he's found. And we need to rejoice just as strongly for those who come back uh, that have fallen away. Sandra Dean Trapp, our sister there in, in, in Belize City. Uh, on, min on Monday, uh, Kenny and Pam and, and Ryan Gordon, uh, Ryan or Ryan, uh, he's the preacher down at Silk Grass and at Dan Griega Congregations, uh, they'd been studying with Myrna Trapp and two of her granddaughters. Uh, these, I'm going to butcher these names, Teresia and Starlache. Uh, they told me a pretty funny story about this one. Uh, Myrna and, and, and Teresa and Starla Shea, they've been studying uh, with them. And, and at one point in time, now you've got to understand, first of all, the language down there. Uh, most people can speak English to you pretty good. Uh, that is the official language of Belize. But there's a dialect called Creole. And Creole makes use of some English words, but it might mix the order and, and shorten some of it. And, and you speak it with that accent and, and quick enough, and you can't, you can't tell what's being said, really. Well, Myrna had a, a thick Creole uh, about her, and, and so Ryan was doing a lot of the studies. And uh, they said at one point in time, they're studying, and, and a young man walks into the room, and he says something to her, and, and, and again, can't really understand what was being said. And she just got so hot, and, and she jumped up, and she went over to the table, and she took some food and a, a plate and just started slamming up food on the plate and gave it back to him, just fussing at him the whole time in this Creole. Couldn't understand his, uh, a word with what was being said. And, and I'm, I'm sure they were mortified. You know, what's going on here? What, what did we just step into? Uh, they were being quiet. Uh, they said they looked over at Ryan, and Ryan was staying out of it, but he had this little grin on his face. You know, he, he could understand what was being said. 
And, and later on, they, they asked him uh, what had happened. And he said, apparently, he was not expected until later that afternoon. And he showed up early asking for some food. And she just lit into him, said, I'm here trying to get myself saved, and you're interrupting me for food. <laughs> now, uh, she might need a point or two about anger, but isn't it good to see someone, especially you know, she was a non-Christian at that point, but she was serious about coming to Jesus Christ. And, and this grandmother just laid out a beautiful example for her granddaughters about how serious it is when we're studying about becoming a Christian, and two of them followed with her. Uh, she lives in a very small house with at least three of her grandchildren, and please pray for our now sister Myrna and Starla Shea and Teresia as they grow in Christ. Uh, i got some pictures of them too here. This is, uh, well, I'll be honest with you, I can't tell between Teresia and Starla Shea. That's one of the granddaughters there. That's the other one right there. And that's Sister Myrna. Right there, the grand, grandmother. On Tuesday, Mona and Mom and Dad had been studying with Loretta Torres. Uh, ever since they got there on Saturday, they'd gone through lessons one, two, and three. Uh, when you go through those lessons, you, you talk about how important the Bible is, and we, we follow the Bible and nothing but the Bible. You talk about the difference between the old law and, and the New Testament through Christ. Uh, you talk about what sin is. You talk about worship. And she had been through studies one, two, and three, studied all these things. Uh, on Tuesday night, after hearing the word preached and after talking some more with Sister Mona, uh, she decided there was no reason to wait. She wanted to be baptized that very night. And, and here's Sister Loretta Torres here with them. That's ten souls. Ten souls. Uh, what a black eye for Satan. When he'd made a full court press to try to oppose this thing, and yet there's ten souls added to the Lord's body this very night in spite of the best that he could throw at us. I, I'd love to tell you so much more. I'd love to tell you about the Vacation Bible School and beautiful children. Beautiful children. You can't hardly beat them off with a stick. They're climbing all over you and, and loving on you and, and s just singing and, and just beautiful children. Uh, I'd love to tell you about some of the others that we studied with. I uh, studied with Arlette. Uh, and her uh, three children were there as well, uh, Marlon and, and Rayanne and, and Artin. And she was so engaged in the study. And that was one of the ones that went back Wednesday morning uh, just to see if I could possibly finish the study with her. And she was making preparations for the storm. Uh, she was fixing up some food to take with her and, and couldn't finish that study there. And I just know, I mean, you never know, but I just know uh, she was right there. And we, we give those contacts to Brother Melvin, and the church will follow up with them. Uh, but you hate to leave them. You hate to think, well, what if something happens to you in that storm? You hate to think of, of where they're at currently. Uh, there's Ben and Roberta. Uh, again, Mona and Mom and, and Dad study with, with these. They were lost. They were looking for directions to somewhere else where they had a, a study, and, and they were asking for directions, and then... All of a sudden, just this receptive couple was dropped into their lap, and they wanted to study the Bible, and so that's what, exactly what they did. The uh, only thing was, they worked all day long, both of them, and they, and they had to go back and do those studies at like 8.30 at night every night. Had to miss dinner with the group, but that's, that's just part of what you do when souls are at stake. And, and so those are, are currently thinking about what they've studied about. Think about Magdalene and Jonathan. We were lost <laughs> looking for our study and walking around asking for directions. And we just happened to run into a lady. Her sister had been hit by a bus earlier that day. Already lost part of her leg and she was struggling. And we sat and we prayed with her and we talked with her. Uh, come to find out the next day her sister died. Partly because of her religion. She, she refused to take any blood transfusion after being hit by that bus. Uh, but we introduced the young man at least to Brother Melvin. And, and they need the gospel. They're lost. They, they need the gospel. And the church is going to be there for them. Pray. Pray that they, they come to the church. There's so many others. So many stories. I hadn't talked to all of these study groups yet to find out all of the stories, but there's a lot of them. So many lives touched. So many lives impacted. So many prayers to be sending up right now for those who are still thinking about what they've studied. I want you to know we've got strong, godly men in those pulpits down there. 
It's not second-rate preachers. When you go down and, and as I said, when you go to that funeral and you see someone standing taller than you could ever imagine a man standing at his wife's funeral presenting the light of the gospel, even then, you know he preached another funeral the very next day for somebody else? Never stops. And that's the way these men are down there. Just, just tireless servants. Not just the preachers, but you have tireless servants there in those churches. Brother Kenneth Bennett, Brother Conto, Sister Mercer. So many that just work their fingers to the bone and they want to do something for the Lord. Got no shortage of, of harvest to be gathered down there in the country of Belize. Again, beautiful children, another generation growing up that, that needs the gospel. Are there problems in the Belizean church? Are there people there? Well, yeah, 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 of course there's problems there. They're always in need of more strong men. That's, that's always in need in the Belizean church as, as it is many American churches. Uh, they've had kind of a good problem there. They've, they've noted that. The reason we lack so many strong men here in this congregation is we keep sending them out. Uh, you go up to, to Hattieville and, and to Belmopan, and, and there's several other congregations that don't come, come to mind right off, but they'll just list preacher after preacher in these other congregations. They came from us, and the reason we don't have strong men here is we keep sending them out. Well, that's good. That's the way that it ought to be, but, but you've got to replenish. You've got to grow another generation of them, and they're at a low point right now. More than ever right now, the Belizean church needs the support and encouragement of churches like Roebuck. Those who will step in, and, and we don't want to reach over. We don't want to do their work for them, but we want to give them support. We want to give them encouragement. We want to stand side by side as a, as a faithful sister congregation that loves them and is going to support them as they go forward into the future. And so there was great things attempted for God this year. There was great opposition. Satan didn't like it, but God won a victory anyway. God is active, and we cannot stop now. Won't you start now in planning for 2017? I, I know there are some that would, would love to go. Maybe you've thought about going before and, and, and participating in, in that kind of way. Again, all the prayers, all of the monies that are given to support this effort, it's, it's all part of it. It's all hugely appreciated. But if you have any thought on your mind about maybe I'd like to go and see that for myself, maybe I'd like to go and, and teach or help out in that effort, uh, talk to somebody as soon as possible before that thought gets off the mind. Talk to somebody. We got uh, several on the Belize com Committee here. Myself, talk to me, talk to Gary, talk to Kenny, John Gallagher, Tim Shoemaker. Any of them would, would be glad to talk to you and fill you in on how you can be engaged in this next year if you so choose. Won't you please pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for all your many blessings. And Father, we thank you for the blessing of work Father, you created us. You, we are your workmanship, created for good works. Father, we, we know that we can't be any happier, any more fulfilled than when we are working in your harvest. That's what you sent us to do. We're laborers, and Father, we pray for more laborers. We pray for more reapers. Father, empower us and, and help us to have the wisdom to take your, world, your word out into a lost and dying world here in Birmingham, Alabama in the country of Belize, wherever we might have an impact in your name, Father, please help us. Please motivate us. Please uh, help us to gain the knowledge and the wisdom that we need to, to go out and to do these things. Father, please be with the church in Belize. Father, we, we know they have many needs at this time. Most immediately, we, we pray for those who've been impacted by this storm. Uh, we pray for those there at those congregations that have suffered damage, and we pray for their neighbors also. Father, please shine your light through those congregations at this time. Help those who are in need and, and use your people to, to help those who are in need so that you might be glorified. Father, we pray for a strong and godly generation that will rise up and that will lead these congregations into the future. We pray for those that we support here, Brother Clayton, Brother Melvin, Father, please increase their ministries and, and give them good and long, useful lives in your service. Be with each and every member and likewise increase their service. Father, please be with us. We thank you for this relationship with this mission effort that we've had for all these years. Uh, please sustain us in that and grow us in that. We pray all these things in your Son, Jesus' name, and amen.
it's always encouraging to think about how God is working in this world, uh, how God is working in this country, how God is working in this congregation and in our sister congregations. But I, I want you to just think personally with me for just a moment. How is God working through me? How does God want to work through me? Who does he want to reach through me? Uh, have you given your life completely over to him such that he can use you? That's what he wants to do. In just a moment, in a blink of an eye, in a breath, we'll be over on the other side. And this will be the only question that ever mattered. Do you belong to him? Is he your master? Is he using you in the way that he wants to at this very moment? If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, don't live apart from your God any longer. Give your life to him. And if you are a Christian, but, but he, doesn't yet, he doesn't control your life at this moment, you've taken it back, won't you make that right? Won't you yield it back over to him and consider what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ? If you have anything to be made right, if you need to come to Jesus Christ now, or again, because you, you've walked away, whatever you need, if you have any need, please come as we stand and as we stand.